today on Rock the Park. Oh my gosh, oh, he's man. running. Boom, boom, boom. We're back in Yellowstone. Ooh, you smell that? A land of ice and fire. It feels like another world. As the temperatures drop, it is not pretty. Oh. Are you kidding me? We might be out of luck with this plan. The action takes off. Oh, there we go. Oh, we did it. It doesn't get much better than this. And it all starts right now. I'm Jack Stewart. <laughs> and I'm Colton Smith. We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Get set to rock the park. It's winter time in Yellowstone, the world's first national park, and that means low temperatures and less people. But the adventure certainly doesn't shrink this time of year. Between the skiing, snowmobiling, and steaming geyser basins, oh, here Come comes right the cloud. Out. Yellowstone is winter gone wild. Exploring in winter can be just as spectacular as exploring in the summer. Located in the northwest corner of Wyoming, where the Great Plains meet the Rocky Mountains, Yellowstone receives an average of 150 inches of snow a year, and sometimes double that in the higher elevations. Most of the park's roads are closed to cars in the winter, so for our trip to Norris Geyser Basin, we're taking a snow coach. Look at this beast. These snow coaches are heavy duty. They're like a bus, but with tracks like a snowmobile so they can plow through snow. Most of the major sites like Old Faithful and Mammoth Hot Springs are open year round and accessible by snow coach. We're cruising along and then out of the corner of my eye, I spot something big and brown outside. This has got to be a bison. Up to 5,000 bison roam the park, split between two herds. The largest herd grazes right here in the northern end of the park. Oh man, look at the size of those two those guys. guys are big. You can tell that they're both males because they are gigantic. Those guys are at least 2,000 pounds. And they're right next to the river, which is not frozen over. That tells me that there might be a hot spring that's keeping the water a little warmer than usual. During the winter months, bison migrate to lower elevations where the snow and temperatures are milder. Bison have to eat 10% of their body weight a day to survive the winter. That's almost 200 pounds of grass a day. They use their broad heads and powerful neck muscles to sweep away the snow to get at it. Oh my gosh, oh, he's man. running. Oh my gosh. Wow, he's booking it. I have never seen a bison run like that before. Oh man. Oh, he's taking off. And that's why you don't want to get too close to those guys. Bison can run up to 35 miles per hour, and they are much more agile than they appear. Ooh, you smell that? I do. That's the geysers. That's sulfur. The hot springs and geysers release hydrogen sulfide, which smells like rotten eggs. Yellowstone has the highest concentration of geothermal features in the world and contains more than half of all geysers on Earth. They're all powered by the super volcano bubbling away underground. Norris Geyser Basin is the hottest and most active spot in the park. We've got two areas to check out. We're starting with Porcelain Basin. The milky color of the mineral deposits that bubble up inspired the name. Oh, there they are. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Look at that thing pumping. So this is our first overlook of Black Growler Steam Vent. Steam vents, or fumaroles, are usually found on hillsides above a hot spring. Water that seeps into the ground is rapidly boiled and spewed out as steam. Oh, it's here comes right the out. cloud. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, That's nice, actually. Little bit. Yeah. These steam vents are the hottest geothermal features here and can get up to 280 degrees. That steam was not 280 degrees, luckily for us. <laughs> Still, I'll take any warmth I can get. <laughs> All right, let's get down there. Okay. 
As the steam clears, we catch sight of the boardwalk. It's kind of fun. It's this perfect little path that takes you through almost this alien zone of geysers, hot springs, and all these other geothermal features. One of the most important things to remember is to stay on the boardwalk. It can be extremely dangerous for you, but it's also a fragile ecosystem. I start to see what looks like a stream, but it's bright green. Different temperatures produce different color bacteria. Green's pretty hot, but it's not as hot as the other ones where you get into the blues. The bright colors are a result of thermophiles, microorganisms that thrive in super hot temperatures. Blue water can be more than 200 degrees. It's so cool how you can just by color tell the temperature. Yeah. And you know it's bacteria or algae because they're the only things that can survive in water this hot. <laughs> now it's time to check out the back basin and the tallest geyser in the world. When it's erupting, which is very rare. This is Steamboat Geyser. When it erupts, it's over 300 feet. Now, the chances of it erupting on the one day that we're here, probably not gonna happen, but you never know. The last major eruption was in September 2014, but it's totally unpredictable. In between, you get these mini eruptions of 10 to 40 feet. It's spouting. It's pretty amazing how these geysers work. Essentially, you've got this heat source, which is the super volcano, and this water, which is going through these basically little pipes, heats up, and it just forces it up, which is why you get these spouts of water that just shoot out of the ground. Those pipes, they're connected. So if Steamboat erupts, some of these other hot springs around it will actually get drained because of all the water's being sucked and spit out through this guy. So we're standing here hoping that this thing will erupt. Three, two, one. Let's go! We might be out of luck with this plan. Yes, it's working! Oh, <laughs> you, got, you got 20 feet, I think. I got 20 feet. <laughs> Not a full-on eruption, but hey, it's doing something. Yeah. To be here in the wintertime amidst all of these steaming hot springs and geysers shooting out water in the air, I mean, that is spectacular. And there's so much more to see. Coming up on Rock the Park. Here we go, baby. Woo! We've got a need for speed. Oh my gosh, we got some. Is that a wolf? We're in Yellowstone National Park, getting ready to try something new. Today, we're gonna go cross-country skiing up to Tower Falls, and then we're spending the night out here in the Yellowstone winter. Let's just say it's seven degrees right now and the sun's out. Oh my gosh, it is seven degrees. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay though, we've got our heavy duty tent, sub-zero sleeping bags, we're, we're prepared. We are. Ooh, looks like we may have a bison jam up here. Oh yeah. We're making our way to the Tower Roosevelt Junction, where we're gonna have to hoof it all the way up to Tower Falls in our cross-country skis. Okay. All right, let's let it be known here that I have never gone cross-country skiing in my life. <laughs> so you're gonna have to teach me. And basically just think of jogging. It's all you're doing, but you got skis and poles. <laughs> We start to move and it is not pretty. I'm sliding around, I'm trying to just get a motion and nothing seems to be working. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> it's only two and a half miles to get to our campground, but at this rate, it might take us all day. So what I just found that really, really helps, it helps with your endurance and just your motion. It is, it's, you really need to have your heel up. Because when you got your heel up, you can just go. Okay, all right, let's give it a shot. Getting it. We start to get a little bit of a rhythm and we're moving. It seems like we've been going uphill forever, but finally it levels out and it looks like we've got some downhill ahead of us. The start was not really graceful, but Slowly but surely, we're picking it up. We've only got another half mile to go until we reach the Tower Falls campground. It's really cold out here, but cross country skiing is quite a workout. We're already building up quite a nice sweat. It's time to shed some layers. 
You ready? Ski on. Let's glide. Oh, man. Looks like we got a decent little downhill here. Oh, yeah. We hit the downhill slope, and we just start picking up speed. Yeah! I'm moving pretty fast. The nerves start to just fade away, and I'm having a great time. Yeah! Woo! As we're cruising along, we spot some elk up on a hillside to the left. Elk are such a fun animal to spot because they're huge. In the summer months, there's over 25,000 elk here in Yellowstone. But in the winter, you generally don't find elk at this elevation because finding food is tough. And being out here in the deep snow leaves them more vulnerable to predators. Elk make up 90% of wolf kills here in the wintertime. There are more than 400 gray wolves in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. They live and hunt in packs and will prey on herd animals like deer, elk, and even bison. Uh, I don't see any bulls, do you? No, I don't. We were wondering where the bull was that should have been with those females up on the hill. Well, the question has been answered. Oh my gosh, there's a huge, huge bull elk right down there. Oh my gosh, that's a big boy. Holy cow, look at the rack on that guy. I mean, this guy's horns are like this big. I'm just glad that I didn't startle him the way he startled me. So what we're gonna do is just go along the left side, do it quick, and we're out of its hair. Yep, let's go, let's go now. Luckily for us, he seems preoccupied. Just going to our campsite, buddy. Oh, oh my gosh, is he big? Our campground sits at an elevation of 6,600 feet directly across from the Tower Fall. We'll head there after setting up camp. Winter camping can be tricky, but we've got a heavy duty four season tent. The first thing we want to do is stomp down all this powdery snow so our tent has got something solid to rest on. So we start putting this thing together and we've got it in all four corners. And I noticed that something just doesn't seem right here. Is that supposed to be like that? Oh, dude. These poles aren't for this tent. Uh, Are you kidding me? Classic cold. Yeah, this one's on me. I packed the tent, and I brought poles. They just happened to be to another tent that got destroyed on the top of Mount Rainier. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is this. We tear this down. We pack up and we get to check out the falls and then our car's only a couple miles away. So we should be able to get back there before dark. It's not the end of the world. This is definitely a major bummer, but it's a lesson that I'm definitely gonna learn from. Always double check your gear or in my case, triple check. As we leave the campground, we start to glide down on this really steep hill. And that's when I realize I probably should have learned how to break. <laughs> We're in Yellowstone National Park, and after blowing our plans for winter camping, these poles aren't for this tent. Jack and I decide to salvage the rest of the day by heading down to a natural wonder that played a huge role in making Yellowstone a national park. We get to Tower Fall, and the view is incredible. Wow. It got its name from the towering volcanic rock formations that surround it. Tower Fall plunges 132 feet. A painting of this iconic view in summertime helped persuade Congress to make Yellowstone the world's first national park in 1872. To see it encased in this ice dome in the winter is pretty spectacular. As much as we're enjoying the view, it'll be dark before we know it. It's time to get on the skis and get back to the cabin. Right as we're approaching the car, Yellowstone throws something else our way. Ooh, man. We've got a coyote. He's coming right towards us. Hey, get out of here. He looks like he's got something in his mouth. This guy's more interested in the dinner he must have scavenged from a nearby kill than he is in us. That was so crazy. All right, let's get back to the car. Today has been one surprise after another, but tomorrow we're revving it up, trading in our skis for something a little more powerful. Pat Mackey, our guide, will be leading us on a 120-mile trek through some of the most dramatic landscapes in the world, including the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone and Hayden Valley, a hot spot for wildlife any time of year. We just 
just set off on the snowmobiles and it is spectacular already. It is so surreal to be navigating Yellowstone when it's just coated in snow. All right, so we've just entered Swan Lake Flat, which is just this beautiful open area here. As we're cruising along, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for wildlife. And we don't have to wait long. Got some trumpeter swans right out there by the river. Named for their bugle-like call, <laughs> trumpeter swans are the largest waterfowl in North America, weighing up to 30 pounds and with the wingspans stretching to eight feet. Trumpeter swans have more feathers than any other bird out there. Which keeps them warm in these freezing temperatures. After going nearly extinct because of hunting and habitat loss, the trumpeter swan is making a comeback in the lower 48. But there are still only a handful in Yellowstone. Ooh, they're taking off. You see that? Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. Here they go. Our next stop is the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. At 671 miles long, the Yellowstone River is the longest undammed river in the U.S. It carved out this huge canyon, and so much water flows through here. Even in the depths of winter, the falls never completely freeze over. That is crazy. It's like half of it is just this giant wall of ice. The ice wall that it's forming right there in front of the falls, it's all created by the mist. We've done a little ice climbing before. I don't think I'd want to attempt that one. The lower falls are twice the size of Niagara Falls. That's about 300 feet. So <laughs> I, uh, I'm actually quite fine with the view from up here. We head back and we're cruising. Next stop, Hayden Valley. All right, we're in Hayden Valley. I'm absolutely just scanning right now for anything that seems to be moving. Ooh, looks like Colton spots something off to the right. Oh my gosh, we got something. Is that a wolf? It's a wolf or a coyote, or it might even be a fox. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. We're snowmobiling through Yellowstone's wildlife mecca, Hayden Valley. Ooh, looks like Colton spots something off to the right. Oh yeah, you can see his tail. That's a fox. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Red foxes are the smallest of all the canids in the park and are known for their bushy tails and dark socks on their feet. Oh, he hears something. See him tiptoeing? Oh yeah, he's definitely oh, looking yeah. for something. He can hear it. Foxes, they've got this really keen sense of hearing. And so when there's something underneath the snow, they can sense it. Foxes will prey on voles, mice, birds, amphibians, pretty much anything they can get their paws on, especially in the dead of winter. He's getting ready to pounce. Watch him. Here he goes. Oh, there he oh, goes. we did it. Oh, man. Yes. Oh, that was awesome. Winter here in Yellowstone is harsh. And to be able to survive, you need to adapt. And you got to have some skills like that guy, because without that sense of hearing, you go hungry. There he goes again. Oh, oh. My gosh. This is incredible. We've been to Yellowstone countless times, and I have never seen anything like that here. Oh my, there he goes again. Seeing this fox was the perfect way to cap this day. And a great finish for this amazing trip. Winter in Yellowstone does not disappoint. We've been coming to this park for a long time, and this trip showed me that there is no bad time to visit Yellowstone. You think you know a place. The fact that we had to take a snow coach, snowmobile, and then cross country skis to just get out and experience it. And every corner we came around was something new and something spectacular. And sometimes it's those little mistakes that create those memories. We got all the way to our campground, set up our tent, and then realized that you brought the wrong poles. <laughs> Next time, you're gonna bring the right poles. But we were there. That's what counts. <laughs> when you visit these national parks, it's about just being there, trying something new that maybe you never thought that you would try. Life is just way too short to not go explore. And remember, hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park.
everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.